Hello everyone, I'm Sha, the writing and research half of the Tales and Oracle of Eleven. Some of you may know me as Little Cat on this channel, and for those who are new, hello, 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 and I hope you're having a great week, month, year, and beyond. The audio from Lala's side is a little bit choppy, but it's not that bad. I hope you'll bear with it because the amount of information they bequeath to us is so, so worth it. The sad part of the whole editing process is the fact that I had to cut so much from the recording. But anyway, here is Lala Berekai, our artist from Timor Lorosai. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me today. I, I am super appreciative. You are actually the first person that I'm interviewing for this, this whole process. Oh my god. And I, okay. I really think that we both hung out on the internet, on chat like a house on fire because you have so much information and as a person who loves mm. information mm. i i'm just like taking dumb. everything <laughs> in and i'm like oh my god and your art is so uh. hot like this this is a this is <laughs> a thirsty you. interview i guess <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's amazing. Nice um, because nice of that, I think it. I think we're gonna start off with saying, um, what do you want other people to call you? What are your pronouns? And uh, where can people find you? I'm Lala Berekai. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm pretty much in, in every social media, mostly on Instagram, Twitter, Lala Berekai. It's very Google. Uh, if you Google Lala Berekai, it will appear uh, everything about me. Yeah, it's a very distinctive yeah, name, which uh, is really, really good. Timorese. How did you find yourself in the arts? Like, what propelled you into illustration? Uh, I started at early age. Um, it started when I was to hold a pencil, mm -hmm. <laughs> mostly. And I never, well, I never gave up drawing and uh, it was it, I wrote it as a uh, escape, uh, escapism mostly and uh, as as you know my parents are are re were refugees uh, my now immigrants so I had a difficult childhood so drawing and art was uh, almost uh, uh, the only thing that made me happy and and my and create my own my own little world and uh, since I uh, enjoy watching cartoons and uh, uh, read about, uh, read comics and games, uh, I was compelled to to do the same as the the, sh the cartoon shows that I used to watch. You know, make my own worlds, make my own own heroes, and uh, you know. And back in the days, you you know, there's not uh, there was not many people like me as mm -hmm. like representativity was hero. So uh, I had the, the urge to create my own universe with people like me that look like me, that you know, thinks like me, and everything, mm -hmm. and, and everything else. And then it was developing, and at school. Uh, I was always the you know the artist doing uh, drawings for for myself and for my colleagues, and then um, I just couldn't see myself doing anything else but drawing, and then you know, uh, it happened. And when I reached um, my teenage years, it, it was it's it was the only constant thing in my life: drawing, art, and constantly building worlds and universes, then, uh, well, it was natural for me to pursue a, a, an art career. Just, yeah, it was natural because I literally couldn't think of anything else because it, was, it had been all life. And, and then here I am, just generally speaking. <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Um, you, you spoke about the, the media that you consumed as a child pushing you towards creating your own universes, your own worlds, um, people that you want to relate most to. And this yes, is where exactly. Tales of Eleven comes in. I find that we have such a difficult time as Southeast Asians, um, especially for a country that is as young and as 
yeah. mirror to yes. colonization as Timor. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I want yeah. to yeah. sort of interject. Um, um, you mentioned that Timor Leste actually has a proper name post independence, and I know we spelled yeah. it out, but can you say it so yeah. I don't butcher it? Yeah, it's a Timor Lorosai. 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 But Sai. Sai yeah. as in. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Lorosai. Yeah. It's a, it has a hick, hick of the Lorosai. Okay, Lorosai. <laughs> but you can say Lorosai, yeah, yeah. It's, it means rising sun. Um, <clears throat> that name came on the Independence Day, and they told us. Uh, I remember that day, and they will, they will be known as Timor Lorosai. Uh, but it's, well, when I mentioned uh, back then to you and that I wanted to <clears throat> uh, put Timor Lorosai to represent myself on the, on the project, uh, I see that it's not, uh, it's not fair, and it's not used so, uh, so often now. Even though back then, when we uh, independent, when we claimed the independence, I remember well that they they uh, they, they would wanted to use Timor Lorosai, and for me personally, I think it's it comes uh, personally more than anything else. I think officially it's known as is Timor or Tim or Timor Leste in Portuguese, but for me as Timor uh, as a Timorese and personally. And you know, um, Timor is com comes from the Malay uh, language Timor East, so mm -hmm. it's it's East. east. Yeah, it's, so it's even kind of silly. In Portuguese, <laughs> it's, it's very silly. And even Timor Leste, uh, in Portuguese, means East as well. It uh, comes back to the, to the same. So for me, uh, it makes sense. Even though lot of is in in our language, an official language, Tetum. Mm -hmm. It means rising sun. Then you can read as uh, east rising sun. It's beautiful that way. I, I think instead I think of that's, east, east. <laughs> yeah, it, it is way prettier. <laughs> it, it it makes so much sense considering the amount of stories and data that I've sort of compiled through research about Timor Lorosai, um, and and there's a lot of stories about mountains. Uh, there's one particular story that's coming out about a woman on a horse. And she's just riding up a mountain. It's really an allegory for the dawn and the dusk, really. But it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that, yeah. It can be deemed as you know. Whenever we we spoke, we speak about east. It's always about the rising sun, and the west is when the sun is setting. And I believe that our tales are mostly about uh, rising through the sun to the east for the rising sun. And hence the the girl, the horse riding on the mountains. Yeah, we. It, I can see a pattern there. I I think so. Like, there's yeah. a lot of open plains. There's a lot of uh, running and traveling and going through um, mountainous areas and and looking to the sky and stuff like that. All all these kind of stories. But I ask you, what's your favorite childhood tale from Timor Lorosai? Um, there's many. And, um, you know, it's very period of our culture and uh, hearing stories here in Portugal with my parents mm -hmm. and then their knowledge about, about their own stories, it's very limit, limited. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, could, it could be biased because um, uh, I don't know where, where they come from. They, they used to tell many stories. Uh, it, it almost, it, almost like uh, the story... That, that they will tell is almost like cautionary tales just to, mm -hmm. for us to behave. It's like um, if we, I don't have a particular uh, favorite tale because they always come as cautionary tales. It's like if you don't behave, we cut your hair, <laughs> stuff like this. And then it's just, uh, and, and mostly the, the stories, I find it fascinating, uh, deemed as favorite. Is the spooky tales from Timor? Mm. Is the there? There's a lot, and um, 
yeah, those stories. Yeah, it's kind of my favorite. Yeah, maybe I have a, a favorite because I, I like particular character that mm -hmm. I, I, I made my research back then about, uh, I think in Malaysia as, as well. I think it's common in Southeast Asia. It's about the Pontiana. It's oh, the, yes. A woman bird. Pontiana. Oh, you see? <laughs> Yes, um, yeah, the, uh, the Pontiana for us is more um, a woman who died at childbirth on a very specific day. Um, it, it was, it's considered a dirty death because it, okay. it happened suddenly and you have a child with you and um, both you and the child is now dead. And the common trope is she goes from banana tree to rooftops and she sings. And Please. she will capture okay. uh, men to consume. So essentially, exactly. she's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like a siren, you know. Mm. Um, I always thought about her as a siren because she calls upon men and seduces them uh, with her her own voice. And they, they are attracted to, to her. And then, yeah, she kills them, murders them. Yeah, yeah straight up, like cold and, blood. Uh, yeah, and my parents uh, used to say that whenever we, my father said to me that he once he heard the Pontian and they have a, um, you know, some, something they have they have to do like, whenever you hear about uh, hear the Pontian singing, you have to sleep, uh, 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 sleep on your belly, you know, on your, uh, you turn your back, mm -hmm. and you sleep on your belly, just so she she won't snatch you or something in the middle of the night and, oh. uh, and my grandma always said yeah stuff like this and um and i heard so much about in many different versions but it's mm -hmm. always the same as you said he attracts men mostly and to murder them or and um yeah and the the, the way she died is always gruesome it, it's always like like uh, the sad and the, the she has a child, or, yeah. or and she was killed, or something, and she had, didn't have peace uh, within her. So she haunts mostly men and sings at night and uh, in the, a certain hour to tra attract them. And it's, that's very fascinating. Yeah, it's also so yeah. wild because um, in Malaysia, this we have a movie called Harum Sundal Malam. Harum is um, fragrance, and Sundal Malam is a kind of flower. It's, I, I think you, I think it roughly translates to frangipani, but there could also be another flower that means uh, sundal malam, which is also funny because sundal malam means prostitute. <laughs> and there's this funny thing well... where apparently you can turn her into a human because she's supposed to be very, very beautiful. You can turn her into yeah. a human by taking nails and sort of hammering it into her forehead or something like that. I can't remember the specifics, but I find that so strange that a man would be so bewitched by let's let's call her a siren, as you said. Yeah. That that he feels compelled to get like nails to plunge into her head to marry her. Like this is a dead woman. Dude, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> what no judging, no picture. <laughs> no, not even. I am 100% <laughs> judging. Like, oh, this is a dead woman. I think we have problems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's wild. Yeah, okay. You, you, go, you know, uh, you go, uh, you know how far as uh, going about women and in, in Southeast Asia and uh, how, uh, how are they deemed as, you know, the women's, the, the, the violence that you know that exists, uh, especially on on um, that era, uh, especially on the colonialism era, mm. and uh, I think the the how the the, role, the women's role back then and how the tales were perceived. Well, uh, I don't as 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 I'm. When I, I was trying to work on the on the illustration, I was trying to look for uh, tales that could uh, could have um, a good story about women or their emancipation or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I, and I, I find it I find it hard to 
to to to find oh my god um i find it hard to to look for a legit and a non-violent uh tale about women mm-hmm. so i think the most tales that i that i found i found uh, about women is a uh, it's very close to the the colonial era when the portuguese there were there Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than the original uh, tales, which when I found the the one that I work on it, uh, uh, the woman, uh, the the role of the woman in that in that tale was very important, and uh, the author uh, Fernando Silva, which I work for, and I I use and I read all 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 of his work, mostly most of most of it, and. Um, I've seen that he, um, you know, there's a, something different about the, uh, his tales regarding uh, the regarding Timorese women and their in their our society mm-hmm. back then. So it's very hard to to. That, that's why when 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 I was little, the the resources that we had here in Portugal, so. Many people that used to work on or were very active on the on the on the struggle to to reach independence. So we uh, we used to make a lot of you know uh, how do you say uh, spread our culture throughout Portugal for for our cause. Mm-hmm. And then there there were so, uh, some storytellers that tells. Uh, they used to tell tales about women, and it's always, you know, it's always sad. It's uh, never ends well with uh, uh, with women, and that's why I kind of detached a little bit about uh, from the Timorese tales back then, as mm-hmm. I deep inside I I didn't believe fully that Timorese tales would uh, depict women like that. For example, uh, we have a a very known tale they they used to make uh, a lot of a lot of things around that tale since theater and writing poems about it and everything it's um, a women a woman who cries uh, who have t- who has tears of gold and when whenever she talks she uh, she spits um, petals mm-hmm. uh, rose petals or something and whenever she did that, it's uh, it's almost uh, it's always when she was um, uh, inflicted some kind of uh, domestic violence from her from their husband or 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 something like that. And then and whenever she cries or suffers, she always cries go, uh, golden tears and spill out uh, petals. And that yeah and. They wrote it as a thing, a, a beautiful, beautiful thing to, to, to know that has a, such women like that. So, but I don't, you know, I, I couldn't relate because it, it the, the root of it, that tale is it comes from viol, um, domestic violence from men. Yeah, and it's like and, I, uh, it, it's it's pretty much analogous to, uh a woman suffering is beautiful like how is that good yes I'm, yes thank you it's exactly like that it's the the theme this the the suffering from the timorese woman is beautiful and mm. it's worth a uh, scene for because she you know golden tears and fill petals mm-hmm. and, yeah and that and it was like and, and, and it's a very um uh known tale here the, here in Portugal, they they even made a. I think it's uh, available on YouTube. One day I, I will link it to you. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's and uh, yeah, it's uh, of course they glorify the the tale as being you know she's very beautiful, and then when she suffered when the hu- the husband hit her and he saw the the, the golden tears and and then he had mercy because I don't know just. It's just pretty messed up to, you know, and me as a Timorese, I, I, I just think that, you know, it's not, it's not a very good representation. No, it's, like, it's, you it's know. also really bad for other people, especially young boys, to read this and be like, oh yeah, um, beat her, but <laughs> oh, yeah? if she cries, really? stop. 
Like, maybe just don't <laughs> abuse people? Would don't, be nice. Don't abuse people. <laughs> like, emotional <laughs> abuse yeah. exists. Like, you don't Regardless have to beat the, someone. Regardless, the golden tears are not the don't beat Yeah, them. just don't beat people. <laughs> just don't, don't abuse anyone. Like, that, that should be, like, the core tale. This is funny, um, knowing that a lot of the stories that you've sort of looked for and read, uh, which is... Yeah. Even more than what I have been able to find, because I, I function in English and to a certain extent, Basa Malayu. But a lot of the Timor Lorosai stories are transcribed from, um, transcribed into the Portuguese language, which I can't read. <laughs> so, um, knowing that, knowing that you've sort of read through all of this, um, it made me wonder because I have read texts that underline that uh, Timorese culture, that the Tumdili culture, is very matriarchal. Yeah, um, I, I thought so. But I just, um, I just kept, could tell about that being matriarchal, um, you know, feeling it, but not, uh, but but not the on. What is registered in the culture or on uh, what is known on you know uh, on what we read on the on the internet or even those that I that I have mm -hmm. and uh, when I read about it's nothing but material unless um, about that author the Fernando Silva mm -hmm. yeah he uplifted uh, the uh, uh, Timorese woman a bit. So that's why I chose uh, that particular t tale. Mm -hmm. So, but the books that I had, they um, they were songs about we um, almost all of of our tales are are telling truth songs. Mm -hmm. So when I see the translation, it's very um, one of them was uh, was mentioned about rape even, Ooh. and it's. It's almost like the the women is the price or is an accessory to men uh, from the uh, from their tale. This is my interpretation that I felt when I read those texts, and I was I was trying to to do my research to do you know my best to represent to represent my my culture in in the project, and I I can I can show this I can I I just can't relate it to this because yeah it's nothing but you know a woman being an accessory to men or just a price to obtain. Yeah, it's also uh, very disheartening uh, being either non-binary or a woman. Yes. Essentially, not being a guy and realizing that you have no place in this world other than livestock or property. Even though yes, culturally, exactly, we we even have a a, a kind of ritual. It, it's it, they they still do the, that ritual. Ritual it, it, it's called berlaki. Uh huh. Uh, it's uh, you give a certain mountain of gold if you you know want to marry a, a woman in East Timor. You give a certain amount of gold or 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 cows or you know uh, everything to the to the husband or to the family. The mm -hmm. husband has to give those kind of gifts to family to, to to have the wife or to marry her. So it's like kind of like ownership, and that's why you know it, that makes escalate as we seen it recently and many stories that comes with it uh the dom domestic violence and everything because you know the man paid her so you know it, it's an object for him to do whatever and, and that's in that reason is called berlaki and it's still you know there's some traditions that you know is that didn't age well mm. never we... it didn't age well or ever yeah we we also have that here. Um, it's it's a sort of dowry system. Uh, the man yeah, has exactly. to pay the the woman's wife, and there's like a table that we have to go through based on how much he earns. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, in India, it's the woman's family that has to pay the man's family to sell to to sweeten the deal. Okay, which I find that really strange. But I don't know enough of the 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 Indian subcontinent's culture um, in excess or in, in a limited amount. I, I don't know enough to actually say anything. I just know that we have roots from them and from the Arab subcontinent, from the traders who came here yeah. and said, hey, this is our culture taken. We're like, okay, thank you. 
<laughs> because we have a habit of doing that. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, the, the trade of women has not aged well in this day and age because of yeah. uh, the, the feminism. I am a staunch feminist. Um, I, I think there should be equity yeah, to too. all. Um, but yeah. I think we're, we're sort of running away from uh, childhood tales and country tales and stuff like that. Um, I and well, I know that you read a lot through the the music, and Southeast Asia is a very oral storytelling kind of region, and and musical as oh, well. Yeah. Um, pre pre certain religions coming in and saying music is bad or singing together is bad or you know stuff like that. Um, I'm glad to hear that that culture is alive and well in Portugal, where you live. Um, is it is it like a thing you guys do every weekend, get together and just remember your heritage? Oh, well, um, back then, yes. Mm -hmm. when we have a big community here, the Timorese community here in Portugal. Now mm -hmm. they all scatter around the world, looking for better opportunities out there. Uh, not as much now, recently, but I remember vividly, and mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I always came in touch to my Timorese roots, even though being in Portugal, mm -hmm. because we have a, we, we had a very strong uh, Timorese community, even where, where I live. We mm -hmm. all live together on the, not live together in the same house, <laughs> no, obviously. On, the, on the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, That's good. There was once that, and that they all lived together when they uh, when they fled to Portugal. Mm. And, uh, we have a refugee. We have we had the refugee camp here in Portugal. They don't talk so, uh, so much uh, about that. It's nearly non-existent on the Portugal history, but uh, it happened. We had a refugee camp for Timorese, mm -hmm. and, uh, and for those who didn't agree of. Uh, uh, no, and those who came came from the co the the ex colonies from Portu Portuguese colonies, then they had land there, and then when they reached independence, they stood with us on the on the refugee camp. That's Portugal history for you. Nice. But yeah, we had that. Yeah, and then um, when we they relocated us, we couldn't live on the refugee camp. We you know fabricated houses and stuff. And mm -hmm. leaving all together, literally. Uh, that's why I came to you know a, a city near Lisbon is Stubal. It's it's where uh, I was born and uh, and ra raised and raised. So yeah, we we have a big community. We had a big community in the neighborhood, and yeah, we always gather around on the weekend and pretty much going to houses, going to have dinner there, or you, we can we can go uninvited. You know, uh, dinner or lunch or making a, a, an event on uh, on the weekends just because. And I played a lot with Timorese kids, um, so yeah, it was pretty vivid back then. But um, it and it was what what uh, which was ah how can you say it? Uh, my childhood and the the culture, it it was uh what was formed into me you know i never even though i i i was born and raised here in portugal uh i pretty much got really in touch with the timorese culture just just you know the the way that i i lived here in portugal with timorese people that mm -hmm. were refugees as well like me yeah. and the child the children as well I want to know a little bit on the story that you picked, actually, which is, uh, you, you call it the golden snake of the, how do you pronounce, le, le, le quasin? Le quasin. Le quasin. The le quasin king. Yeah. Golden snake of the le quasin king. king. Um, yeah. what attracted you to this story? And can you give me like a very brief recollection of what the story is? Uh, the tale? Mm -hmm. Talks about uh, a mother, uh, w which was um, a princess from the the um, her father. He was a king of Wemasing. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then that young woman had a child, and um, uh, the child was raised then into a fine man, was a very very beautiful man. And then he was he was enclosed to and uh, he was transformed into a gold snake and enclosed to a box, and uh, and it's, it it stood there, just you know. <laughs> It, uh, it's just so, um, I think uh, the, the, the Portuguese to English, uh, I think it kind of, you know, kind of become a lot of translation here because I, I'm, I'm very confused on the English version. Mm -hmm. Because in Portuguese, it's, yeah, it was pretty, pretty straightforward. So, the, and then uh, a widow uh, was tired of being a widow and then found the box. It just sounds um, in jelly. Uh, and the the man uh, the snake came out and transformed into this beautiful man, and they got married and had three children. I would but, like to uh, have I a think box the, the man... snake. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I would I like, to, like have to have a box snake. Box snake. <laughs> um, petition yeah, no, for a box snake. Whenever I go to Timor, I'm gonna petition <laughs> <laughs> for a box. Yeah. Continue, you know, please. Or whenever we cut through a snake and we, we, we you know, it's like you know, you know, know how um, and... uh, there's there's the story about the oh, frog prince. What is um, Yeah, we we have uh, snake princes. Like you open a box, and the snake turns yeah. into a dude, and you're like, wait, what happened? Yes. Yeah, and then um, well, he, he she married him. Well, I think he, she married him. Or they consume their love, and they and they have two, two chi uh, two children, three tri children. Whenever uh, when they grew up, uh, didn't believe that their father was a snake. I think it's very obvious <laughs> because uh, and uh, they didn't believe <laughs> they didn't believe uh, the, the their mother's words. So mm -hmm. uh, the tale basically tells that you you have to believe your mother or mm -hmm. else your people. So just one one of the children that believed that okay my father is a snake actually uh, uh, I believe that my father is a snake and then he uh, went you know he said to 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 her mother the mother fetched the box and then opened the box and then came out the the man with the coffee skin uh, the sea dug in his eyes and wind dancing in his, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in his hair. Like at night when the moon was so clear, just like I, when I was reading this, I was like, oh my God, this is just, he mentioned this two or three times about this man. I was like, okay, I get it. This, this man is a, he's a hunk, he's, he's hot, okay. It's so, like, uh, and hmm. then, you know, then here's the father. And then, and then, okay, you didn't believe me. Here's your father. And then you, the two was like, oh my God, the, the, what a disgrace. We disgraced you, mother, the uh, forgiveness and the, uh, and uh, the two children represent the 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 people, you know, the you know the people from East, Timorese people, the commoners, mm -hmm. and the one who believed that the the he he was his father was you know claimed to be uh, the the Liurai, the, the the king the, made uh, he made himself royalty. They recognized him as a prince, and the other two were just, you know <laughs> disowned <laughs> or something. <laughs> And then the, this is the, and in the, the the last note that I wrote is was uh, this legend is reborn every time a Timorese child is born, and and grew up with the, their mother, and that's why no one doubts your mother's word, for it doubt the gold snake of the king Blackestone or any other snake or conscience will arise and humanize to punish him. Yeah, that's the caution, another cautionary tale. And yeah, you have to believe your mother. You know? Ah, if you don't, if you don't listen it's, to your uh, mother. Yeah. Your your snake dad will materialize and beat the shit out of you, and uh, just with her <laughs> tail or something. Just that is wild. How does the punish the, 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 the big tight hug until you, uh, you have hard you you know, breath something. But, I think yeah, that, that's yeah. It is it is beautiful I I... in a way where it's it's telling you to believe women. Yeah. It is. It's the, basically that. But when I uh, um, I thought about it, because it was my first uh, thing 
in my mind to you know represent women in the uh, our in our tales but mm -hmm. uh, i end up the draw the the men I, i was thinking about putting uh, the 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 woman as well or represent that uh, as such on the illustration but you know the uh, the many ways that i i, I was thinking about it uh, just i uh, couldn't find uh, anything to work with so i just you know because it was very uh, as you can see on the tail it's the the snake and the and him being handsome and everything is mentioned for fifth times and uh, and the, the the mothers were there as well and i couldn't visually uh, you know uh, catch the the vibe for you know for the illustration to the most words and mm -hmm. the and the, the man snake <laughs> so <laughs> for me <laughs> man snake. and so i just you know just represent the 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 the, the key points of, from that tale the box and the, the snake and the the man itself and um and i think doing that illustration people uh, can relate uh Uh, is instantly, uh, especially people from like uh, uh, like Asa, mm -hmm. face from their that region, because it's a man with a snake and from a box. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty much you know it's uh, very visible. Mm -hmm. So if if I would put a a woman, I I, w I was about to, but um, but it was important. I, I feel like so how you went. The, the yeah, I, I feel like how you went with the direction of your piece was really good because you mentioned that it it the mother is a very nebulous concept we just know it's a mother and she's a widow yeah. and she yeah. has three sons from their union but they s explicitly explain what this man snake looks like like he had wind blowing through his hair he's very hunky like he It's a very visual explanation of a very, very obvious visual, person, exactly. as opposed to it's the, the only, mother. Uh, description there, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the mother is like, yeah. oh, just a mom, like a typical mom, a widow, a widow. So, yeah, and I think I think you did. Yeah, that's really why it good. was easy for me to yeah to to the visuals because it it was uh, basically was the only description on the tail, <laughs> and yeah, and whenever yeah. So <laughs> just the win with it, and um, but I'm happy with the result because mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's very possible from the tail, and uh, I'm happy even though I was even when I ended it uh, when I finished the illustration I, I thought about I should have put some element to represent the the mother or some sorts but okay mm -hmm. there's many more tales to do so it's yeah okay. i i think i so... think the representation of the mother is the box because she did have to pull out the yeah. box to show the son like look this is your dad <laughs> but the dude is hot like... yeah tim Rees, the tim Rees guy like that maybe maybe i'm putting uh, too much pressure on tim Rees man now <laughs> the, the bar they're, set, they're i set now. the bar very high now <laughs> They, this this guy and fully the... <laughs> i don't know the color scheme as well the the blue and gold i i think that that was gorgeous i mm, it's, yeah it's, it's just uh, such a beautiful piece the, the, thank you it's because um the 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 element the key element being this golden snake and uh and it's mentioned uh many times on the tail i mm -hmm. think it, uh, it was very important to me to you know to to highlight the, the the element on the illustration and it was it, it was uh, all, all, um it's it was all of that was intentional uh, mm -hmm. it, me, me, making the the guy darker and the the element the gold element being very visible and very prominent on the illustration mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. uh, even even the, the the title from the tale is uh, the the golden snake or the Or the king of Lekasa and the and, and the golden snake. Well, it, at least um, uh, if we speak about you know the visuals, you no, know, you can tell right away it's about 
it's about a, a, a gold snake. I, I went literally this with, with this tale, but I didn't want to be to do uh, abstract things. I just wanted to go straightforward with this illustration and the message. I want to ask yeah. you about the clothes. Um, I I see you're wearing a beautiful scarf over your shoulder. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? This is uh, it is called Salenda. is um, it's a traditional cloth from from uh, from my culture, Timorese. Mm -hmm. It's called Salenda, and this Salenda. is this is um, Salenda. And this, uh, by the way, this is the how I put it, this is the uh, how men put it. Women go like this, put it in this way, and uh, this is um. We used to, you know, do cultural dances and represent our our culture by doing, uh, wearing this, and we give this as a as an offering to to foreign people whenever mm -hmm. they visit Timor, and for the in, and for the funeral funerals as well as we originally we 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 are a very animist culture, so mm -hmm. yeah, this is a part of the ritual to give to offer this to the to the mourning family uh, on mm -hmm. the funerals. Uh, this is how the the, the Timorese uh, um, women use, um, and then this is uh, this is very pretty much uh, unisex. Everyone, men or women, use this. It's called belak. Mm -hmm. It represents the moon. Uh, uh, we we wear it close to the chest, and we we also have the 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 buffalo horns. Yeah. So uh, I I saw uh, that um, in your drawing. I discovered recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was about to use it in this interview, and I thought, this is too much. <laughs> no, no, out. tell me! <laughs> Go find it! It's just, I'm just, just all, all bling bling, all Timorese bling bling now. It's just, just, yeah, this is I the way. More. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I brought up what you're wearing is because I, I want to talk about the clothes that you drew on this beautiful man. How... was it easy to find the references? Because there's so much, as a lay person, as a person who did not come from that culture, if I type Timor Lorosae or Timor Leste clothes, it would come in this strange mix of everybody else. So there'll be Indonesian clothes, there'll be, I don't yeah, even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like how, how do you filter? specific parts from Timor. Yeah, yeah, you have to filter because... Um, what I've known and from my experience, when we were uh, struggling for independence back then, uh, in, during my entire childhood, since I was born, actually, mm -hmm. uh, we were used to go to, uh, as, as I said before, to uh, show our culture, our dances and everything, doing Timorese events, people uh, will invest to, to show our culture throughout the country in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I live my my childhood entirely using this kind of uh, clothing uh -huh. and was taught on on how to use it and uh, how uh, girls use it and how men use it. So uh, it it is very easy for me whenever I do my research on Google and when I see everything mixed with Indonesian or and and Thailand as well. Yeah, it's similar, by the way. It's, it's okay. Even for me, it's very difficult to. <laughs> Granted, we all yeah, come yeah, from yeah. the same seed. We are all a uh, very yeah, yeah. Uh, trade influence cultures, and we're also very. Yeah, that's why we we like boats. We love boats. We love boats and dancing and singing yeah, and storytelling. Is it? It's a Pacific thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mostly from yeah from the Melanesia, yeah. We, because we 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 caught a, a little bit about Polynesian and Melanesian uh, culture as well, and, mm -hmm. and uh, as I mentioned mentioned before on the chat, we all have the the crocodile and the and the and the kid story tale. The, the Every tale. everyone has that. Yeah. Every single one, and, and I find it curious, but um, even the clothing. <laughs> When I was doing my research, even for me, it was very difficult to distinguish the the, the clothes from Thailand uh, from the, the Thailand. Uh -huh. uh, Thailand is very similar to our, to ours. 
uh, Indonesia not as as much as they use more ornaments. So they mm -hmm. use more you know gold and stuff. And the the way we have to distinguish from the Timorese is the the buffalo horns. Mm -hmm. It looks like a you know a, a, um, a moon. It's mm. a crescent moon. Yeah. I, I, uh, initially, I thought it was a moon. It, it yeah, that's what I moon, thought because I, I I saw I saw the one that you drew on the guy's head, and I was like, "What does the moon represent?" And you were like, "It's a buffalo horn." I'm like, "What? Oh, no, it's a buffalo horn." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, even the name Kaibok. Yeah, because oh, yeah, I yeah. learned it recently actually. Okay, so, a kerbau to it, us it, is that, buffalo. Yeah, yeah, it represents strength, strength uh, fertility, and uh, courage. Yeah, and then we have the moon here. It's, it's Bella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, yeah, that's why the moon is a fertility. No, this is, a, is this is fertility and the serenity and all the moony stuff. All the moony can, stuff. <laughs> exactly, moony stuff. And and uh, yeah, so we have those. We have simple ornament. Uh, even this, it, this, mm. is the, this is the I don't know what it's called, but my godmother she came to uh, came to Port to visit Timor, and I asked her to to bring some stuff, some Timorese stuff for me to wear, mm -hmm. and she brought the, brought me this, and and she never said the uh, she said the name, but I, I forgot about it. But it's uh, one of the things that we used to, and it rings. Ah. Yeah, I don't know if what it does. Yeah. Has so it has I it got to, to do, do with a, a little um, research about this? Yeah. Has it got to do with maybe like a ritual performances? Because I know that Bali has a lot of bells. It, yeah. It, we we also have bells. Um, mostly, but that that's for men for the mm -hmm. dances. We 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 stepped on the floor a lot to do the our rhythmic dances, mm -hmm. and they have the bells attached to their ankles. So yeah, they they perform the the rhythm with, within the, their ankles. I don't know. Maybe this is, is related to you know to the to the dances as well. Mm -hmm. Never never seen them using it because uh, I used to dance as well when I was little. Never. This is the first time that the scene. This is for for women mm -hmm. to use. It's not uh, for men. Yeah, that's pretty much. It's very simple. It's just the, the buffalo horns and the belloc. And the the Taish, the that is very common from um, every part of Southeast Asia. The the patterns are almost like the same. Mm. Thanks so much for watching, but this is not the end. Not even close. Part two will be coming up, so keep your eyes peeled because Lala and I will be back with more interesting chats. Thanks for listening to part one of Lala Berekai's interview. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.